Hello again, this is that library that can do something like this. Absolute Dark Magic. So this update is a whole rabbit hat of goodies, just like all the other major updates. Um, but mainly there are two things I want to talk about, which is WebSocket Persistence, which was a pain to implement, and secondly, admin clients. So first off, the boring thing. Uh, whenever you reload a page or navigate to a new page uh, on the browser, the whole page document gets unloaded and everything gets deleted from the memory. So of course, the JavaScript uh, socio client would also get destroyed. And so if you had done some authentication or perms, that would all be gone, that would be vanished. Uh, but we don't like that. We would like to authenticate once on like a logging page and then continue on the other pages already off, right? So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Uh, this simply is gonna make me authenticated. It's not gonna perform any checks. Here you go, uh, I'm authenticated. And if I now refresh this page, boom, I'm still authenticated. What absolute wizardry. So how does this done? We can see here, main reconnect successfully. This was the previous client's ID. You can, uh, and then here's the here's the new connection that we made here. So basically it makes a new connection to the server and then asks politely, with a reconnect token here, uh, with this magic token, says that, hey, I was that other session before, I would like to continue being that session. And so the server is like, yeah, sure, why not? Here you go, this is this was your old client ID and, and this this is, you were authenticated before, so you should, you should know that. Uh, and so then naturally, of course, uh, to keep the cycle going, uh, it just fetches the next token and saves that down. This token is stored right here under the local storage under this domain because the domain's scoped so you don't have to worry about other domains stealing your tokens, but still they are completely securely encrypted. So let's take a look at some satanic scriptures to see how it's done in code. Basically it's just these two things. You provide the name of the socio client and they need to be the same names for the same connections. So like if I had main on the previous page, this main is gonna try to be that last main, if that makes any sense. And also this second, uh, thing here is uh, just to tell socio client that it should attempt to reconnect to a previous session that it thinks it had. It will first try to find the token. If the token is there, it's actually going to try to use that token. If tokens are misused, they are gone forever. They are one-time use, even if that was a faulty attempt. And then the HTML here, uh, which displays the thing. So basically you can literally look at this uh, get property. It's a getter. So it's not an actual property. So I think that's why I felt is having some difficulties here. So I just made a dummy temporary uh, variable to assign to so that it, it's reactive. Uh, please someone tell me why this is. I have no idea why Svelte is behaving this way. I think it has something to do with the getter. And the second big thing is admin clients. So of course you're gonna to wanna to connect back to your socio server with some kind of admin privileges to do some admin stuff. For example, you wanna make like a, a dashboard or you want to just execute some piece of code on the server without having to stop the server and like add some special code in there and whatever, whatever, whatever. You wanna manipulate it at runtime, let's say. So now you can, just like that. How was this done and what did I even do? So I instantiated the admin client, which this particular one works only on the back end because it has a library dependency, but you can very easily modify the code there, the wrapper uh, to use even like browser WebSockets so that you can make this admin client run on your browser or on another machine, on another process, on across the globe or something. The possibilities are endless in another language because this is just the WebSocket protocol being used. So there's nothing actually special about this admin client other than I made it for your convenience. But yeah, it's basically just like the socio client uh, awaiting until it's ready because it needs to establish connection. It uses a secret, cli secret client. But right now I'm actually cheating. I'm just always passing through all these calls. This is up to you to, to, to make sure that it's actually secure. So you're gonna take a look at this client which contains the IP, the client ID and all kinds of other things. And this data contains the actual data that was sent through. So the uh, function name and the args that were sent to it. And then let's say that the call goes through, I just simply call run and I wanna execute this function on the socio server instance, literally by name, and I wanna pass it these arguments and I wanna get what that results. And I just print it out and then I close the socket. And if you don't know why this is so impressive, let's take a look at this Rosetta Stone right quick. Right here is the check that actually uh, performs, like is the is the lifecycle hook actually registered and does it let the call through? And let's say it does, so it calls this admin function here. Uh, that basically gets all the legal method names. So that's all the public ones. So for example, this one, this one, this one, here's the actual get prop val right here. You just supplied the key and it returns the value. And this is amazing. JavaScript, I, I absolutely love JavaScript. Look at this, look how simple this is. Literally by name, you can just go into this function, grab it by name and call it as a function. And then give it, of course, the, this parameter. Uh, but yeah, just pass it the args, just call it like a, like a normal function. Amazing, I love that. And for convenience, of course, also this methods here, 
which you can also call in the same way, by the way. So if you implement this as like a, an admin dashboard on your browser, you can literally just call this on the browser, get like a select list of all the function names, and then like an input box of all the arguments you want to send to it. And it's that simple to build an admin dashboard. And it works at runtime. You don't have to create anything new before setting up your server. You could have like a five-year server running and you still want to do like new things on it that it wasn't intended to do. And you can just do it this way. Amazing JavaScript. I love it. And amongst the other things that this update introduces, check the docs, check the source code, and tune in next time for version 0.6 where I solve the halting problem.